As you know, there are natural and unnatural pooping remedies um, that come from our grandmothers, that come from our doctors, that come from all over on how to regulate your poop, or as I say, beat your digestive system into submission so at least your poop appears normal. Down below, I'd love to hear what your most crazy poop remedy has been that you grew up with, or just a common one that your grandma always used. Um, and then we're gonna talk about some right now, and I'll let you know why they might be okay sometimes, why or when I would never use them, and what healthier poop remedies can be. And what poop remedies can kind of help regulate your digestion so you're not just beating it into submission, but you're actually working with your body's detoxification process and peristalsis to get this all working perfectly so you have perfect poops. So the first remedy that I am not a fan of and I really don't think is going to be helpful long term for anyone's digestive health is the brat diet. And so that includes bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast. That's BRAT, the acronym. And this is something that pretty much everyone has had done to them as a child, or they've done it themselves, or they've had it recommended to them. And so yes, bananas will stop up most people, and the toast and rice add bulk so they can slow transit time. This can be used, like if you're in risk of dehydration, BRAT diet is better than nothing. If you can get stuff to slow down, so that you're not getting dehydrated, that's when the brat diet can be useful. In general, I think there's better solutions, which I'll talk about in a minute. The good from this protocol is that the diet is bland and it won't irritate on the way out, um, like the way hot peppers would. <laughs> so you know how when stuff goes through undigested, sometimes it's not comfortable coming out. And so this is all bland and it's not gonna be any more uncomfortable going out as it was going in. And it's also dairy free and dairy is a common cause of improper poops. But in reality, it's like taking a medication that mo both makes you go more in the toast and the rice and stops you up um, from the bananas. And then the applesauce contains that sugar alcohol that we talked about in the diarrhea stuff where that can get things going. And so that's just that combination that we were talking about that just because it makes your poops look okay doesn't mean that they're healthy poops. Another common supplement for poops that I'm not a huge fan of is psyllium husk, Metap Metamucil, or other fiber supplements. And like psyllium husk, I do use it in baking sometimes because it does absorb water really well, just like chia and flax do. And so that can kind of make it feel more comfortable inside of you, but it's still just bulk. It's still got to come out. And so it's just adding stuff that you don't digest to your digestive system. And so it does absorb water and that can be helpful for some people. I would recommend probably weaning yourself off of it if possible as you regulate your digestion. Digestion. So they do add bulk to your, your stool that will cause your urge to go to be stronger, but a lot of times it's not gonna completely evacuate. And so that's where you're left with the stuff in your colon still that should have come out, but it's still up there and that's just not a good thing to be carrying waste around in your body that it was trying to get rid of. Remedies that I consider to be okay sometimes is apple juice. If you're setting good bathroom habits or have a kid that's holding, um, apple juice will loosen things up and make them go. And so I've, that's not an uncommon thing in the preschool years is as they're potty training and as they're becoming more independent, they realize that they can hold their poop. <laughs> and so if you're setting up good bathroom habits, then apple juice is something that it, it contains those undigestible sugar molecules um, from the fruit sugar that will cause your kid to want to go. And so if you're trying to set up good bathroom habits for them, that can help them kind of solidify those habits. Um, salt water and magnesium flushes. We talked about this in the diarrhea again, how too much electrolytes can flush your system out. Um, I'd rather you do a magnesium flush than take a bunch of fiber. The problem with that is that when you are flushing out and all that liquid comes out, you can become dehydrated. So it's something that you're gonna to wanna to take slow and just take the minimum dose that you need. If you look in my electrolyte or my salt video, I talk a lot about electrolytes and how important they are and also what we do in our family. And so like even just a bath in Epsom salts can kinda of get things moving again. If you've eaten a lot of junk food or you've been on vacation so your bathroom habits were disrupted and you need to get back in sync, um, taking a little bit magnesium citrate can get that Kinda, if you take that right before you wanna go, like 20 minutes before, that can kinda get you back on schedule. And so that's when, that's sometimes okay, but it's something you wanna use with caution and you don't wanna use a ton and you don't wanna use it every day. Um, ca caffeine is another one that can help you set that bathroom habit or can help kids that have been holding to just kinda get those muscles to contract a little bit more and go and then again set that good, those good healthy poop habits. 
I'm gonna be your star today. Yeah. Can you say poop? Poo. What about fart? Fart. <laughs> Is this so funny? Yeah. Okay, going out, okay? Thank you. Good poop remedy. So what can you use as you are adjusting? And it's my hope that everyone can just use a diet that's working for their body to promote healthy gut and not need to use remedies all the time. But just like a crutch when you've got a broken leg, if you need to use some remedies for poop, these can sort of help balance your system. The first one is activated charcoal. And this is what I give if my kids have the runs or if everything is moving too quickly and I think it's caused by a bug or they ate something that didn't agree with them or even if they ate a food allergy, activated charcoal. It's um, in a black capsule. You can open up the capsule for kids and stir it into whatever they're eating. A lot of times I do it into plain yogurt and it turns it black, which the kids think is awesome. It doesn't have a taste though. It has a completely neutral taste. Or if you're an adult, if or if you're an adult, you can just um, take them and a lot of times it'll settle your stomach. It just kind of binds to all the bad stuff in there so that your body stops trying to evacuate it so quickly. Exercise can get things moving. And so if you need to go to the bathroom at a consistent time, this is another great way to set your routine, um, is go ahead and go walk around the block, maybe while you're drinking your coffee and see if you can get that moving. And so free, good for you in lots of different ways, including your elimination habits is exercise. Um, enemas, I would proceed with caution, but we don't need to be as cautious about them as we are. Like it's totally taboo right now. Enemas definitely have a place. I'm not going to go into how to do them very right now, but just a salt water enema or just a plain filtered water enema. Some people do coffee because again, that gets things moving. Um, can help clean up, clean out all the good stuff. One caution with enemas is you can become dependent on them. And so your body will stop pooping on its own. So again, temporary measurement, temporary crutch to use, but be careful not to rely on this too much. You are more than welcome to rely on all the exercise to get pooping that you want though. <laughs> um, low fiber diets that we have already covered. That's something that you can do even if you're just getting over a stomach bug, if you need to stop the diarrhea, or if you just got back from eating like way too much rich or junk or carb heavy food and you're stopped up, having that low fiber reset can definitely help get you back on track. Um, probiotics. Probiotics are something that I use. We've responded well to them. Those that have small intestinal bowel overgrowth, um, which a lot of times comes with histamine intolerance or like frequent hives, probiotics might not be good for you. So I do recommend probiotics with caution now. We use BioCult brand, which I'll link down below. Um, and again, it works super well for our family and that can really just kind of replenish your gut flora with the healthy gut flora, kill off the bad stuff that you don't like, and then your body is set for good digestion and healthy poops. Hydrated food grade clay. And this kind of works like the activated charcoal is it um, absorbs toxins. It's hydrated clay. There's um, food grade clay. I think it's called bentonite. I don't know. I'll link to it below for you. Or if I forget, <laughs> ask me in the comments. Um, is there's food grade clay and you take it as a supplement, it binds to the toxins. Like clay is really interesting. I'm not gonna go into it a ton, but it binds to the toxins and it also provides trace minerals. And so if you think about it, like we, our humans developed carrying a lot of stuff in clay pots and cooking in clay over the fire. And so we would get clay in our diets pretty regularly. Now we don't. And so taking clay to regulate your digestion is something that you can do. You don't take a lot. You don't take a lot. I would just fill a jar like a quarter of the way full with the powdered clay, add water, stir it up a little bit, and then it'll, it'll absorb. And then you can take that as a supplement, um, just like half a teaspoon, a teaspoon. Start slowly and then build your way up. Um, to, I don't know, I wouldn't do more than a couple of teaspoons a day. That's something you're going to have to look into more because that does border onto pica, which is craving non-food items, which can be a sign of a mineral deficiency. But there is um, kind of a healthy tolerance and then there's a not healthy tolerance of eating clay and you just want to do your own research so that you know where that line is. Homeopathy can do great stuff for regulating your digestion. I was not a believer. I was really resistant to it. Um, I was, and I had a few different, I guess, homeopaths 
that just prescribed remedies to me. They knew me and they're just, I get that a lot. I think having a kid with special needs and being open to natural health is people will just give me remedies to try. And so I'm like, whatever, it's a sugar pill. Um, I don't think it's gonna work, but I can give her a sugar pill a couple times a day. It worked, um, not for everything. And it's not my first go-to. My first go-to is always food, but for acute stuff and digestion, like constipation, diarrhea can definitely, or even like stimulating fat, I think, I think homeopathy definitely has a place in most people's medicine cabinet and it's definitely worth a try. Um, I'll link to a class that I've taken down below that I really like by Jenna. And then I've just done some, um, just some Googling and tried a few remedies. I ended up buying this kit and I use it quite often, much often than I'd like to, much more often than I'd like to admit, just cause it keeps working and I don't completely understand it, which is why you don't hear me talk about it a lot but it works and I've never had side effects from it. And I'm treating like, I do all sorts of stuff for all sorts of people or I do all sorts of stuff with homeopathy. I can try and do another video about that if you'd like. Um, if you'd like to take a look down below, if you don't, um, definitely lots of other methods you can use to treat digestion, digestion issues. Then the last one I wanna cover, and this is where you get into the really tough cases like C. diff is an infection that's super hard to treat. And there's probably some other gut infections that are really hard to treat. And what I recommend for that is a fecal transplant. And so that's where you put poop from a healthy person in a capsule and then up like a suppository. Gross, like totally against everything that like our culture is okay with right now, but there's been some amazing success with it. And so if you're kind of at the end of your rope, you can't figure it out, do a fecal transplant. Like, it's really, I've had friends that have done that for like their parents that have been in the hospital in ICU um, and just they made a really fast recovery. It's something that you can do. It transfers the whole microbiome instead of trying to get probiotics through the whole digestive tract. It's something that you definitely want to proceed with caution with. I'm sure you can transfer diseases that way as well. But if you're at the end of your rope and it's overwhelming for you or it's between that and like being in the ICU or death, like definitely worth considering. So that is my last good poop remedy. So fecal transplants is my last good poop remedy. Thank you for joining me for all of this. I hope this was super helpful. I know it's not comfortable to talk about, but it's super important for us to talk about. And so I hope this answered some of your questions. As always, I am open to correction. I am open to questions. I honestly don't really know what I'm talking about beyond that I've read studies and this is what I've taken from the studies and I've done stuff with my own family and it keeps working. And so it's working for us, but I'm definitely not a medical doctor. I'm definitely not even any kind of professional. Um, I am a girl on YouTube. So if this was helpful for you, I am glad. If you have questions or comments or concerns, please leave your comments down below. I always love being questioned because it just helps me to learn more. So thanks for joining me. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. I forgot I was gonna talk about babies at the end. So baby poop, breastfed baby poop is, should be yellow and like mustard like in consistency and that can be any of the colors of mustard. So like you've got the seedy mustard and you've got the yellow, like bright yellow mustard. All of that is normal for babies, um, breastfed babies. As you introduce solids foods, it changes more towards to adult type poop and that's just based on what they're digesting. Formula babies I don't have a ton of experience with. I tend to think that their diarrhea, constipation issues kind of mirror ours, and I definitely recommend looking into a homemade hypoallergenic formula um, if that's the route that you are taking. But we're going to talk more about breastfed. So if your breastfed baby's poop is green, a lot of doctors will say this is normal, and yeah, it's normal. Um, if it's green and a lot of times mucusy, it means that they're not getting enough hind milk. And so the four milk, the first milk that comes out is usually, and this is how what's been true for me. This is probably not true for everyone. Everyone's a little bit different, but this has been true for me. It might be true for you. The first milk that comes out is sugary and really watery. And so that's good for um, quenching their thirst and getting that like little sweet hit so that they're motivated to keep eating. And it can like kind of perk them up a little bit so they have a little bit more energy it's a lot of energy to nurse especially when you're a newborn <laughs> and so that first milk that comes out is sugary and really rich in hydration really rich in water and then behind that is the hind milk and the hind milk is really fatty 
And so, you know, our bile that our liver makes that digests fat is green. And so if your baby is only getting the watery and the sugary milk and not enough of that fat, you're gonna see green poop because that bile doesn't have anything to absorb into. And so that's where the green poop from your baby can come. Um, all of my three have had it and it was annoying, but I, like the solution for us was to block feed. So I would do four hours and I nurse my babies on demand. So I would do four hours on one side and then I'd switch and do four hours on the other side. I didn't switch at each feed or they'd always get that green poop back. Even like we nurse into toddlerhood and then they'd get up in toddlerhood, which is like ridiculous. So it made me lopsided and it made me leak on the other side, but I just used a breast pad and my babies had perfect poop. <laughs> um, constipation in breastfed babies is usually a result of dehydration and that's something you're gonna wanna watch. Like the extreme version of that is brick dust and that means they're not getting milk. Like for some reason your body's not making milk or it's not getting into the baby somehow. That's something you like immediately want to seek help with like through a lactation consultant or it, it'll look like brick dust in their diaper. And so that's something you immediately want to seek help with. Like it's kind of an emergent situation that your baby's dehydrated that much. Um, as far as if their breastfed poops are looking less liquidy, mustardy, and more formed, that can be a sign of dehydration. I don't know the current recommendations of um, water for babies, for breastfed babies, is I didn't ever need to supplement water with my babies. They never had that issue. So you probably just wanna check with whoever you get real medical baby advice from, not some girl on YouTube, and see if supplementing them with water is okay. Um, but just like that form poop with breastfed babies is usually a sign of dehydration. And then as you start solids, um, and this goes for breastfed or formula fed babies, there's a big push. As you start solids, um, there's kind of this big push for if it's easy for them to chew with no, with just their gums, it must be easy for them to digest. That's wrong. Like, and it's, it's hard for people to break that, oh, well, it dissolves in their mouth. It must be easy for them to digest. It just doesn't. Like rice cereal is hard on baby's digestion. It might go into their mouth easily and they don't choke on it. It's not a choking hazard. Um, I'll link over there to how I start my babies on solids and it's with really nutrient dense food that is actually easy to digest and it contains the probiotics. It contains the B vitamins, iron, um, vitamin A and D that they definitely need breastfed or formula fed. And so that's just a common misconception that just because a food is soft and easily dissolves in a baby's mouth means it's going to be easy to digest and it's not um, like starches take a lot of work for the body to actually extract the nutrients out of and a lot of babies are not going to digest that well until they're quite a bit older or a lot as we're finding a lot of kids just aren't digesting starches and grains well at all. So that's what I know about baby digestion. Not a whole lot, but I did want to touch on it. Um, you can click over there and see how we start solids with our baby. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you back later. Later.